Hey guys, I'm Roland Techphysist, and I've been using the Galaxy Z Fold 4 since it came out, and here's my full review. Let's take a look. The design of the Galaxy Fold 4 is very similar to the Galaxy Fold 3, as a nearly identical camera island, a cover screen with small bezels, an under display camera, and a fingerprint sensor embedded in the power button. All in all, it's Pretty much the same device on the outside with some small tweaks and changes to improve the usability but there are a few nice changes. Some of those changes include the hinge design although visually there's very little difference on the outside and even that can only be seen when the device is opened but more on that later. As for the outside there's a fresh new coat of paint and different dimensions and aspect ratios. Compared to the Ford 3 the new Ford 4 is slightly wider and shorter giving the phone a more usable cover display and a wider main screen. When open the phone can and still stand on its own making use of the tripod and flex mode features in the software and in general it's the design that we've come to expect from these kind of foldable devices. And while I'm glad to see that this design and form factor is sticking around there are a few things that must be highlighted. First is that the Fold 4 still has a display crease although it's less visible than the one on the Fold 3 and there's still a gap in the middle when the phone is closed. These aren't deal breakers for me but they might be for you especially considering that most other phone makers have done away with both of these in the past few months. The Galaxy Fold 4 is powered by the Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1 chipset coupled with 12GB of RAM and up to 1TB of storage. I've got the 256GB version which is plenty enough for me to store my favourite apps, photos and videos. The hardware of the Fold 4 is perfectly up to date and even the base configuration is more than enough for most people. Generally speaking it's a top notch device for the flagship performance. While it might no longer have the latest chipset on the market it holds up perfectly fine without any issues whatsoever. Whether I'm using multiple applications side by side or playing games for multiple hours at a time, the phone keeps up and never slows down. I've never experienced any lag unless the application was unoptimized for the larger display. I've never come across any throttling issues and the phone didn't heat up massively. Overall it kept up well in most day to day use and I had a lot of fun multitasking watching videos and movies as well as browsing the web and playing games. If the raw power is all you care about then the Fold 4 will have enough to keep you entertained for multiple hours. Talking about the entertainment, the display of the Fold 4, or should I say displays, are fantastic. They're bright, colourful, responsive and I've never experienced any issues with the screen not performing as expected. It was always excellent from day to day multitasking, watching movies and browsing the web and generally it was just a very enjoyable experience. As I mentioned earlier, the Fold 4 is now wider and shorter and the displays have gone through some changes. The cover screen is now wider, making the general usability and the typing experience far more enjoyable and useful and the main screen shows more content at once without cutting off elements on certain websites and applications. I still wish the cover screen was as wide as in traditional smartphones but compared to the Fold 3 it's a complete overhaul and a far better experience. The display crease is still here and very much visible but it's less noticeable compared to the Fold 3 and it's less distracting while using the S Pen although I've never had any major problems with this. I'm hoping that Samsung finally takes some inspiration from the likes of Oppo and Honor and comes up with a creaseless hinge and display solution but as it stands the Fold 4 is holding up strong. I've never had any issues with the display or the crease itself and it's easily one of the best displays I've ever seen on a foldable smartphone to this day. When it comes to software it's essentially the same experience as on the Fold 3 as all of the multitasking quirks and features, flex mode and tripod mode and many more. If you're looking for the best foldable experience then Samsung is still ahead of many other smartphone makers and it's hands down the best foldable smartphone experience I've ever had. I've tried out other foldable smartphones from other device makers but Samsung's implementation is the one I prefer. While the competition is slowly catching up the only other company that could take this crown from Samsung is Google and the company unveiled the Google Pixel Fold not that long ago at Google I.O. 2023 and we'll have to see how it stands up against the Galaxy Fold 4 and later the Galaxy Fold 5. By now you probably know that I always have nitpicks to find and mention and it's the same this time around. The one big letdown of using the Galaxy Fold 4 happens when you use third party launches. You see Samsung limits the use of the taskbar which is one of the highlighted features in the promotion material yet it's only available when you use the official Samsung launcher. As someone who heavily relies on Nova Launcher it's a huge letdown as the feature is greyed out and unavailable for use. Luckily the edge panel is still around and that's what I've been relying on in the past few months to use multiple apps side by side. I wish Samsung allowed third party developers to take better advantage of some features but overall Android 13 is pretty well optimised for affordable devices and more applications and games are receiving support to provide an even better experience. There are still some bugs and issues here and there but it's far better than it was a year ago. 
The Galaxy Fold 3 received a lot of criticism for its camera setup, but I'm happy to report that Samsung heard the feedback loud and clear. The Fold 4 received better sensors and major camera improvements in the camera department to make this affordable and excellent camera smartphone. The camera on the Fold 4 is excellent, and while it still lags behind the likes of $1,000 flagships, it's more than acceptable and capable of everyday use. The primary camera takes great photos in all lighting conditions, and the images are always sharp, with plenty of detail, great dynamic range and contrast. I rarely capture blurry photos, and while it could be less noisy and more detailed in low light, it's perfectly up to flagship standards. The ultra wide camera also captures great photos during daytime with plenty of detail, excellent dynamic range and highlights. The images usually turn out crisp and detailed, and turning on night mode when the lighting conditions become dim would take things further. The overall results are usually top notch, and I don't have much to complain about. The 10 megapixel telephoto camera is capable of 3 times optical zoom, and and it usually does a decent job at taking photos from a distance. The captured photos and video often remain sharp with plenty of detail, and while some noise can be seen in challenging conditions, it's on the acceptable side. Selfies from the cover screen are usually pretty good too, unless you opt for the one on the main display. Those shots are pretty bad, but good enough for video calls and chatting with friends and family. Luckily, you can, at any time, take selfies using the primary camera, enabling you to take excellent photos in any lighting conditions. Overall, it's a pretty solid camera setup, and while it won't be as amazing as the Google Pixel 7 or the new Galaxy S23 Ultra, it's more than capable of capturing your important moments. I'm very happy with the performance of the camera, and I'm excited to see future improvements on the next affordable flagship. One of the main downsides of the Galaxy Fold 3 was the battery life. It drained quickly and it lacked support for a proper fast charging solution. The new Galaxy Fold 4 fixes most of these things, but not all. During my use, I was able to go for a full day without any issues and I can confidently leave the house even with just 60% battery left in the tank. The Fold 4 comes with the same 4400mAh battery and it usually gets me 4-5 to five hours of screen on time with mixed usage between the cover and the main display. The battery only drains faster than expected when I play online games. Generally, the phone can go for a full working day and I often end it with 50-60% to left. Normally, I play a few games here and there, browse the web, chat with friends and family and use a few social apps as well as the GPS. The one thing where the Galaxy Fold 4 still fails is the charging. The phone only supports 25W fast wire charging and while it's faster than the Fold 3, it's nowhere near as fast as the one offered by the competition. There are some good news, however, and wireless charging and reverse wireless charging are still here, providing easy and convenient charging. So with all of the added way, should you buy the Galaxy Fold 4? The answer is fairly simple. If you missed out on the Galaxy Fold 3 but want to experience a truly innovative device that takes things to the next level with its excellent set of displays, powerful chipset, great camera setup and decent battery life, then yeah, by all means. The Galaxy Fold 4 is an excellent device and it's one of the easiest recommendations I can make. However, it's not for everyone. If you don't see yourself always folding and unfolding your smartphone or you just don't know how to properly take advantage of the massive screen estate, it's unlikely to replace your current device. This foldable form factor is for those who often multitask and want to do more things simultaneously and those who want to consume a lot of media and play games on the larger display. If you fall into that category, the Fold 4 will be an excellent device that will make you look past the few downsides and learn to live with them. The Galaxy Fold 4 is my favourite device to this date, and even though I had a chance to try out multiple other flagship devices in the past few months, it's the one I keep coming back to. If you want a solid, affordable flagship that delivers power without any slowdowns, has a beautiful camera, support for S Pen, and a large and responsive display, and a decent battery life, then the Galaxy Fold 4 is the phone you should buy. And there you have it. Hope you found this video useful. If you did, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to my channel. With all that said, thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.